My name is Mario Sampson. I've been working at Duke Clinical Research Institute for almost a year. I'm also affiliated with the University of North Carolina School of Pharmacy. In the Pediatric Trials Network, I've been working mainly on data analysis. Well, unfortunately, many of the drugs that are used in children, and they're used commonly, unfortunately, they actually lack approval or regulatory uh, approval in that age group. And so doses are actually often used based on the adult dose, and then they're scaled by body weight uh, for use in children. And the problem with that is it can, it can often be uh, potentially unsafe just because uh, during development, uh, children, especially infants, undergo developmental changes. So the way their, their body handles the drugs is often different than that in adults. And so there's, there's a real need to, to improve the evidence uh, for the use in drugs directly in children uh, before they're widely used uh, in the larger population. The, the barrier to gathering evidence in children, uh, one of the factors is the need for uh, blood sampling. And so, of course, in children, uh, and even for adults, uh, blood sampling is uncomfortable. And in particular in infants, their, their body just doesn't have enough blood in some cases uh, to even enable uh, the ability to characterize how the drug is handled um, over time, which is, which is a field called pharmacokinetics, which, in which you give the dose of the drug and then you take blood samples to see how the concentrations of the drug in the body change over time, and that allows you to, to uh, give an appropriate dose uh, for the larger uh, population. And so these studies are hard to do in children for ethical reasons and in terms of also just the technical challenges of uh, the blood sampling. Well, dry blood spots are a, a technique that's been used for genetic and metabolic screening of newborns for quite some time, but hasn't really been used until recently for drug studies. And the main advantage is that the, the volume of blood required is 10 times less than that than traditional plasma sampling. And so that would allow you to do studies, for example, in, in premature infants where the, lim the limits on the amount of blood is just uh, so severe that that's perhaps the only way you could do the study. And b dry blood spots also has the advantages of uh, being stored at room temperature. And uh, the storage conditions are um, pretty easy and shipping is, is easy. And also training of nurses to, to conduct this, the uh, dry blood sp spot sampling is, is not very difficult, and it, it's actually easier than sampling out of uh, veins called venipuncture, which is the standard uh, method. So for all of those reasons, um, dry blood spots, um, if, if we have the instruments to, add it, to adequately measure the, the concentrations and they're comparable enough to traditional sampling, then they may, may be a good way to do sampling in the future for these studies. You take a capillary tube um, after you've, you've done uh, uh, the puncture, and you take a small amount of blood and you, you place it onto a filter paper. And that filter paper has a defined uh, area that the, the, volume, the, the blood spot is on. And then what the, when, you analyze, when you analyze the spot, um, the machine takes a very, it takes a, a punch of the paper um, that's been covered with blood in order to measure the concentration uh, re reproducibly. Because dried blood spots require 10 times less volume, than traditional sampling, it, it will hopefully give parents um, the, they'll be more confident and more um, willing to allow their kids to participate in these studies that require blood sampling. And uh, therefore, uh, hopefully we'll be able to conduct more studies in children so that there's better evidence for the, for the drugs that are used every day in this, in this population.